Well, we, we like to think that our healthcare system is something to be envied. Uh, and actually in the Western world, it's one of the worst. Uh, and we're not ready to have that conversation as a country because we've, we've based so much of our uh, national identity on this, this notion of free healthcare. People just don't have the the context to understand how bad our healthcare is compared to most other civilized Western nations, specifically uh, the Nordic countries in Europe. So when when you hear this this documentary is definitely worth watching because he interviews a lot of people from uh, from European health agencies where they talk about how like a lot of people don't know, but uh, most modern Western health agencies have a mixed private public system uh, and this amongst other things amongst other reasons uh serves to make both significantly better and so when we talk about you know even the notion sometimes of having any sort of uh dual system in canada is is poo-pooed immediately and you're you're accused of wanting to bring you know american style healthcare to canada and there's just the reality is there's just so much uh in between those two systems the u.s system has its benefits for for certain people if you you know Viva Fry talked about recently on a prod, on a, a podcast about how, you know, because he lives part time in Florida now, he says, well, you can you can you pay a lot of money for private health insurance in, in the U.S. Uh, and you get you get decent care or you could pay a lot of money in taxes to fund a shitty health care system in Canada. So it, it'll, it'll end up working out about the same. But the specifically the the northern European countries with their with their mixed private public system. They are so so superior to ours in in almost every way. The the public system base, functions so much better. Yeah, you get a base level of guaranteed coverage. Yeah, and then the overflows. Um, I I think the the key part is that it's not. They have some restrictions on that. Like a doctor cannot dedicate a hundred percent of their time to a private right. clinic. They must yep. balance out some of the hours. So it's not like they're poaching talent. They yeah. have, they're not punished for making some money in the private. Um, there's still incentives for the, like for these small clinics to, to start up. And now you have a expanded capacity because one of the restrictions in Canada right now is that you've got a certain amount of funding. And if surgery beds if you've funded all your surgery beds, you could have two open beds. The beds are physically open. You have somebody willing to do a surgery on that bed, but they can't fund it. Therefore, you have capacity that can't be met with the funding that you have. Yeah. And there are people that, well, they have to wait eight months for a surgery. They would pay money to yeah. fund their own service. So you, you have a mismatch between the demand and the supply and it, it's kind of just being blocked in the middle. So there there is some in between that could be approached. Yeah. And the problem is you mentioned that the conversation gets gets distorted. And again, that you mentioned that thought terminating cliche of American style healthcare or American style politics or mm -hmm. When you build an ethos around these terms, um, it's easy to demonize. It.